Så jeg vil have to say a few words in Norwegian. Of course, of course. Vi kom til denne veldig impulsive og litt sånn sprøde innfall jeg fikk om at jeg kan irritere Ona her til en bitte liten videoinstruksjon. Og jeg må fortsette på engelsk, for hun snakker jo ikke norsk. So I just told them, like, I met you here in Phoenix, and I... You have to do this in English, right? Because where are you from, Ola? I'm from Toronto, Canada. Canada? I was yeah. thinking Scotland. Why was that? Because of the red hair. Probably the red hair and the name is, is Scottish. Right. Yeah. So Ola and I met for the very first time back in October in uh, Dallas. Yeah. And now we're meeting up here again. Yeah. And I've been thinking about Ola because she told me that she has this great online program for people who want to get fit. And I'm thinking a lot of people like me and you, right? We want to stay fit and get fit. And and since especially, I don't know if you know this, but in our program we actually say don't <laughs> exercise. Don't exercise, I right? Do know that. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that as, as a personal trainer? Well, you know what? I actually think if someone is really looking to lose weight and they're overwhelmed by everything they need to do, uh, to say to focus on the food yeah. is definitely, that is how people lose weight. I right. think it is a little bit of a misunderstanding that you can lose weight through exercise, that you right. can work off food. So I love that your approach changes that mindset. Right. However, one of the biggest factors in order to maintain weight loss is consistent exercise. Right. So we want to implement exercise again to maintain the weight That's loss right. and at least have all, also like have all the other positive benefits. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So I jumped on a very quick uh, Facebook uh, live this morning. Some of you were there live and some of you have posted other comments later, right? And what many people are asking like how do I get rid of that loose skin? Yeah. Because like I've lost like forty right. pounds, right? Yeah, that's and good for you. Yeah. I've been pregnant twice, so yeah. there has been some movement going on in this Understandable. area. Understandable. Yeah. How, what can I do about it? So the the sort of the bad news on that is that there isn't really anything you can do exercise-wise for loose skin. Loose skin is going to be a factor of your genetics, right? So if you look at your mom and your grandmother and you see if they have loose skin, then that's going to be sort of a factor. And the other thing is age. Obviously, the younger you are, I don't know if you know any moms who got pregnant quite early, they were more likely to sort of right. get rid of that loose skin tighten afterwards, and tighten up. Um, whereas, you know, so that's going to be age and genetics. However, it doesn't mean that you can't tone the right. muscles underneath that skin. Yes. And it's going to give you a more sleek appearance and toned and healthy. And like Susan uh, Persomson, who developed this Bright Eye Eating program, said like, thank God for clothes. Right? <laughs> so uh, we can decide when we want to drop the clothes and then totally. the persons who are there probably don't mind as much as we No do. one minds. No one minds. And the thing is, yes, thanks God for clothes, but you want to look good without your clothes. So right. exercise helps you a little Right. Bit. So I also experienced, because it's more than two years now since I lost my excess weight, and it has gotten better, I must say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not by actually targeting it so much with the uh, exercise, but just by itself. There's time. Right. Yeah. So time will also help. Absolutely. So we'll look at that, how we can give ourselves some core strength and uh, work on that muscle area. Mm -hmm. And we wanted some like upper body, lower body. We'll do a like full body. We'll do a full body training program that requires no equipment and works all the major muscle groups so you can rev up your metabolism and get maximum benefits. Perfect. And also, I also know because I don't have any equipment at home. Yeah. I try to make my own kettlebell by filling a bottle of sand. Good for you. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't really feel like. Sure, sure. Right? Okay. So it's not like those 16 pounds kettlebells that my yeah, boyfriend yeah. uses, right? So, <laughs> anyway, so for this exercise, Una and I have talked about it. You don't need any equipment except for the way. Your weight. hot body. Your hot body. Yeah. And then we will uh, talk about some. Um, uh, balance, balancing. Uh, yeah, that's a exercise. great idea. You, you said you really like that. I do really like that because balance is one of those secondary components of fitness that people don't think about. Right. But if you don't balance, it's going to train those little stabilizing yes. muscles. Yes. It's going to prevent you, especially as you get a little bit older, from falling. It's also great for core support. So anytime you add a balance element to your workout, you're actually training your core as well because it's stabilizing you. So it's really important. Right. So should we also, do they need to do anything like to warm up before they start? Totally. To? Yeah, that's a great idea. So do you want to show us a few... Um, warm up? Oops. Warm up. Yeah. So um, first I'll just say, so the purpose of the warm up, because a lot of people like to skip the warm up, the purpose is to gradually raise your heart rate, to gradually warm up your tissue temperature so you're less likely to injure yourself, and gradually warm up the joints. Okay. Right. So this is preventing injury and it's going to make your workout better. Right. Okay? Okay. So. The first thing we'll want to do, so you, she will be my teacher today and I'll just copy her as best as I can. Okay, so what she's going to do is she's going to 
going to start with some jumping jacks. Okay. Okay. Best one we've seen from the there we go, military, later. right? Beautiful. So if you're working out at home, you might want to do 20. If you hate jumping jacks because you feel like you're going to pee, which is really common for moms, yes, you're going to take it to lower impact jumping jacks right here. There we go. Okay, so let's say she's done 20 of those, and now we're going to do some squats. So you're just going to imagine you're sitting back in a chair. Beautiful. Look at this squat. I'm wondering how far all my... Should the feet be apart? So you're going to be just outside your hips, <clears throat> yeah, with your toes turned out slightly at about 20 degrees at your toes. Okay, there you go. And the reason we want to do that is to make the knees track out exactly over your toes right here. Which is I, beautiful. This is a beautiful squat. Maybe you can see I, I want to cheat and come over now. How? Look at this. She's so good. So instead of doing that, you want to make sure you keep your chest up the whole time. Ooh. Imagine there's something fascinating happening here. You want to keep your chest up. Gorgeous. And she's going very deep. You might not be able to go that deep. And if you're not, that's totally fine. Keep it a small squat. I just want to impress my teacher. You're doing such a good job. Okay, so now let's add some cardio. You're going to kick your bum. Great. And let's add some rows. We're pulling back. Great. So right here, she's opening up the knee joint. She's raising the heart rate. And she's training, uh, warming up her back and biceps. All right. Okay. So she's going to do this for a count of 20. 17. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And now, last little bit of the warm-up, you're going to take your feet at hip distance, and you're going to step back and then drop into a lunge. We're challenging balance here, warming up the balance, and then step forward. Very good. I remember, I have done like, quite a lot of personal training in order to... I can tell your form is excellent. I'm just going to tell, tell you to take your feet a little bit wider apart. Right. I want you to imagine you're on train tracks, right. not a tightrope. It's a bit like... Like we do in Norway, we have to think of like going skiing. There you go. Lovely. There you go. Awesome. Excellent. Morning. There. Okay, so you want your warm-up to the people in the gym. Yeah. No, you're fine. <laughs> you want your warm-up to be about 10% of your whole workout. So if you're doing an hour-long workout, your warm-up's going to be about six minutes. Okay, so let's pretend she's done that. So she could repeat that. She would do jumping dives, she would do some squats, she would do some butt kicks, and some lunges. Right. So do Perfect. like three rounds of that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So let's say I'm feeling warmed up. Yes. The way you know you're warmed up is if you would want to take off the layers. You should be breathing a little bit heavier, but not out of breath. Okay. We're going to do some yep. strength training. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is for the lower body, okay, you've got a few primary movement patterns. I'll just make sure that the camera catches this if we go down on the floor. Good. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is just keep going with the squat. There we go. So she's warmed this up. Her body is familiar with the movement pattern that we want. Now, if you have no equipment and you want to make this harder, you're going to reduce your range of motion by pulsing just a bottom squat. Oh, you okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> I love that she says thank you. So one thing that she's doing beautifully is she's keeping her weight in her heels. And she should do it like this. Yeah, look at this. So it's not that her knees are coming forward, her bum is heading back. Her weight is here, you should be able to wiggle your toes the whole time. Her chest is up, her belly is braced, and she looks gorgeous, right? <laughs> Great, so here we are, so we've, that's gonna be working our quadriceps here, primarily quadriceps, a little bit of glutes and hamstrings. But let me show you the next exercise that's really gonna target your glutes and hamstrings. So I want you to come down here, you're gonna take your feet hip distance apart, you're going to roll your shoulders back and you're going to squeeze up your butt, squeeze your butt, right. squeeze your hands. We call that the half bridge in the yoga. Half bridge, there you go. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Perfect. So here she is, she's doing the half bridge, and you can just come up and down. Right. And you're driving through the heels and squeezing your bum. You can also add a lower abdominal uh, element. I'm just imaginatively closing here. Imagine you're doing that super tight jeans. Right. As so I, I remember my yoga teacher telling me, like, I should imagine I'm tilting my... Your pelvis? Right. Yeah, forward. Right. Like, yeah. Longing my lower back. Yeah, that's right. Lengthening the lower back. You might feel an opening through the hip flexors, where a lot of us are tight because we sit all day. So how does this feel? Are you feeling a burn, or do you need a bit more intensity? I feel it. And also, I wonder, should I feel it mostly in my lower back, or mostly in the bumps? Great question. I really want you to feel this in your bum, not your lower back. So, are you feeling it in your lower back? 
Okay, let's start to experiment with putting your legs out a little bit more. Scoot your heels out, and let's try again. Why? Right. Is that helping? Yeah. So this is something that's going to be different for every body. Oh, that moved. I was even that in your hips. Perfect. Good. That's what we want. So at home, if you're going to experiment, what is the distance between your heels and your bum that works for you in order for you to feel it right here? Okay? And if you want to make it harder, you can go to one leg only. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. There we go. But then just there stand we go. up. You can do this. This is called a marching glute bridge. Ooh. Perfect. Or you can hold one leg up and you can tap it up and down. The leg, okay, yeah. stay up with it. Yeah. Okay. Feel that? I do. <laughs> I do. There we go. So, for example, let's say she's done one minute of the low pulsing squats and then she's going to come here and do one minute of loop bridge variations. And she's really going to feel that in the bum and hamstrings. Okay, so now let's flip over and take your chest, shoulders, and triceps. So you're going to come to a push-up. Push but then I'm also targeting the ones I've talked about loose skin. Absolutely. Right? If you feel like you've got loose skin right here, again, loose skin is not something you can treat with exercise. However, you can target this muscle right here at the back of your arm, and it's going to give it more tone. I'm thinking, if they're working out as hard as I do, they would probably need a little water break. Have <laughs> your water nearby, okay? Perfect. Mm. Okay, ready. Okay, great. So let's do a push-up. Your hands are going to be outside your uh, shoulders. And we'll start with a modified push-up on your knees. Okay, hands are uh, wider than your shoulders. You're going to drop down and push up. So what's commonly done with push-ups is you're releasing the floor and you do like the Little Mermaid. Right? No Little Mermaid. Nor do I want you to headbang your way in. Okay? So it's the elbows that bend and straighten. If you want to go on the toes, you're here. Dropping down, pushing up. What, if you're going on your knees, I want you to keep your toes down. Don't cross and bring them up. Because well, why is that? When you cross your legs, you're going to put your hips out of alignment. And you're not going to get the core benefits right. of that plank. If you think about it, a push-up is a moving plank. Right. So you're working your core as well as your chest, and shoulders, and triceps. I'll try that. Great. I'll stay on my knees. Perfect. Then plank down and pushing up. It's a beautiful push-up. Great. And you want to think about pushing with your chest. <coughs> awesome. So you squeeze it together on the top. It's gorgeous. Look at the nice long line between her knees coming all the way up. This is great. Her core is braced. I can also feel this on the back of my thighs. Back of your thighs. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, last one. Now, if you find push-ups too, if they hurt your back, a modification would be a box push-up. Right. So here and here. The other way you can modify push-ups is to start to elevate your hands. So you could do them off of your kitchen counter. You can even come to a wall right. and start here. Okay. So if you're at your kitchen counter, the first back you go with your legs, right? The more yeah, the weight more, you have. Yeah, and the more you are standing, the easier it's going to be. Okay. Right. So uh, as you get stronger, you go from the kitchen counter to the couch, to the ground, right? So it's a way to progress. So now you've done your chest, shoulders, triceps. In order to balance out the upper body, we need to do biceps and your back. So I'm going to bring you to the wall here. And you can stand against the wall, and I want you to put your elbows pressing into the wall tight, tight, tight. Good. And so you're really engaging your back here to push into the wall. Because we're only using body weight, she's using the wall as her resistance. Okay? So press in, and now I want you to press in and bring elbows up, up, up. And down, down, down. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, would you want me standing tall, tall like this or like lower? Well, if you want bonus marks, you can come into a wall sit and do that at oh, the same time. God. Like, and her knees are trying to get over the toes. She's right now working all her lower body, especially her quadriceps. She's working her back, trying to disengage the knees as much as right. possible. Because a lot of us carry our tension right up here. So, we tend to do that when we exercise. We want to drop into the shoulder girdle. This might be easy, but it's really hard. It is what she's doing right now. It looks easy. That's right, but it's really hard. She's challenging the flexibility of her shoulders as well as her upper back. <coughs> and I'm biceps. doing this again. I've never done this before. I'm yeah. doing this against the wall. Yeah. It gives me so much more contact with the shoulder blades. That's right. Yeah. Ooh. This is a great postural exercise. So if you are like most of us, spend a lot of time on your computer like this. 
right? This is a great way to fix that. <coughs> this shoulder tension. Right. Yeah. Just like most of us tend to do this when we're exercising. We really want to think about concentrating. It's a mind-body connection on the muscles you want to feel, right. not on this. Okay, so she's done upper abdominals. Let's do lower abdominals. So let's bring your feet up to 90 degrees. And now, I want you to imagine that there, I have a piece of paper underneath your bum, and I have to grab it. So you're going to lift your bum up. Right. So you're just going to lift up with your feet to this, like this. Oh, yeah. straight up. Okay. Oh, there we go. Whoa. There we go. Perfect. So this is a small movement, but it's really going to target the area between your belly button and your cubic bone. Okay, where a lot of us have a little bit of extra skin. Do you feel that? I feel it. Can I use my hands to like push yeah. down? Yeah, you can even put your hands underneath your bum if you like. <sighs> yeah. This is like something I would want to skip. Don't skip it. Don't skip it. It's really effective. It yeah. is really effective. <laughs> Because this lower abdominals don't often get trained as much as the upper abdominals. So this is a great idea. Nice. Ooh, perfect. Okay, so that, um, now we're going to do bicycles. So hands are here. You're going to bring over here. Right. And then you over here. Okay. Excellent. Nice. She's, so, she's got such great form. With the bicycles, you want to think about bringing your shoulder across to your knee. So it's not the elbow so much as the shoulder, as the rib moving towards the hip. Rib moving towards the hip, which I can absolutely see happening right here. And her breathing, did you hear that? She's like, exhale, exhale. Nice, gorgeous. Okay, so now, <laughs> let's come into a plank. So with the plank, we've done upper abdominals, lower abdominals, obliques, and now we're gonna train the transverse abdominals, these are the muscles that bring your waist in, that wrap around your core. This is going to be excellent for lower back health and to reduce the circumference of your waist. Right? So come on down, you're going to take your elbows right underneath your shoulders. Good. Look at this plank. Look at this. She was born to plank. <laughs> Look at this gorgeous long line here. Her quadriceps are engaged and lifted. Her bum is tucked under. Her belly is drawn in. I want you to make this such an active plank. I want you to imagine there's a candle right underneath here. Okay. Yeah, and she's bracing to hold herself nice and tight. Okay? I learned that like thinking that you should uh, pull the kneecaps up. That's right, pull the kneecaps up. It's going to engage your quadriceps. Yeah. Keep this so nice and strong here. And so this is a really strong position for the back. You don't want to let this sway, nor do you want to let your bum pop up. Can you demo those for me? So let's, there we go. This is her core is not engaged at all. You see that? And this is going to be very well for her back, and she's not getting the core benefits. Now come back for me. So you, that will give you guaranteed back pain. If yeah, that will give you back pain. Now show me your bum popping up. Like into, like, you know when people go. Right, right, right. There, like down there we go. So this is her also avoiding the tension of having to engage her core. I can stand here forever. She could do this forever. This is just more shoulder flexibility. This is core, okay? If you need to modify, drop your knees for me, please. So there we go. And drop your bum a little bit more. This would be a modified plank. If you have any back discomfort, doing a regular plank, this is a good modification for you. She's breathing smoothly the whole time. Her elbows are stacked right underneath her shoulders, and her whole body is engaged. So this? Great. Excellent. So that 
is an example of a full body training program you do anywhere, you don't need any equipment yes. other than your hot body, and you're training every major muscle point in your body. That's really, really good idea. Uh, so, um, good morning. Yes, good morning. So, um, balancing, balancing, great, balancing. So, a good exercise for balancing. Sorry, I'll just have to, okay, so yeah. that we can see the screen as well. That's yeah. why I have to do this, right? Okay. okay. So for balancing, and again, I love that you guys asked about balancing because it is an uh, under, sort of under focused on. Right. Okay, so what you're going to do is just stand on one foot, and this might be enough, okay? Right. If you don't even want to stand on one foot, you can put one foot down, but put all your weight on one foot, okay? Then I want you to take one minute, set a timer, balancing on one foot, and if this is easy for you, I want you to make it hard by challenging yourself to oh. reach down, to kick out. You're going to stay on that one foot. As long as you can, this is so good. You're going to also be working your glutes here. And maybe you'll freak out your family <laughs> when they come in and see you doing this. And you can do this while they're brushing your teeth. That's right. right. Yeah. There you go. So are you feeling that you're stabilizing muscles on this leg? I do. There you go. This is great. And again, this is awesome to prevent a fall, to train all those stabilizing muscles. Excellent for the glutes and the core. So try for one minute on one side. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so my yoga teacher always tells me, like, that if you are lucky enough to lose your balance, yeah, it will give you an opportunity to find your balance. Beautiful. Yeah. Which is life. Which is life. Which right? is life. We we fall. We just get back up. That's how it goes. Then you're gonna do the other side, and almost definitely you will find you have much better balance on one side than the other, which is a great thing for you to learn about yourself that you tend to favor one side, and one right. side's a little bit weaker. You know, uh, people know that I'm a trained yoga teacher, right? So we would do this three pose. Yes. That's also a balancing yeah, pose. Yeah, absolutely. And my yoga teacher always says, there are no good or bad trees. Oh, that's right. It's not like, you, you can't be a perfect tree. What does a perfect tree look right. like? Because we often change the outer form. Yes. Like, to yeah. look like it does on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> so give me your most original. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. That's better, Be right? the weirdest tree in the forest. Be the coolest tree in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh my god, this was so good. Yeah, man, right? you did a great job. Thank you for that. You were so welcome. And we all sit in like 20 minutes. That's right. Yeah, you oh you could do this in 20 minutes, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Wasn't she like the best? <laughs> so if you have a uh, I mean, we can get back to you, right? We can do like a follow up. Absolutely. Some time. If you guys have any Meet questions. Meet you in Zoom or like, I don't know. So if you have any questions, Absolutely, let me know. Um, it's been awesome talking to Norway this morning. So cool. Thank you Thanks so for much. Me. And I'll also include uh, Una's link so that you can get her stuff um, when we get the chance. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.